welcome back to a new art journal video. Today I'm going to make this very fast and simple page in my art journal, so please keep watching if you want to see how I did it. And as usual I am using my Dilutions Creative Journal and today I'm using my large one. And I'm just flipping through the pages here to find one that I want to work on. And I chose this page which has a few dots of ink on it already. And these dots are actually dried stickles glue and I used this page when I had to clean out some of the bottles that had dried up a bit before. And before I start I am putting a few sheets of paper behind my spread to protect the other pages in the journal as much as possible. And usually I do get a lot of ink seepage and stuff like that anyway, but by using a few sheets of paper I can minimize it at least. And a while back I stole this tape roll from my husband when he was putting up walls in our house and I think it will give my page here a nice texture. And it's actually some sort of tape that you use when hiding the edges between two drywall boards. And I'm taping this randomly over my spread, not really thinking too much about it. And when I'm happy with the amount of tape used, I am bringing up my distress brace and I have chosen to work with the blue and purple colors here. And first I'm spraying the page with the dark purple and I think it might be seedless preserves, but I will check and add a link in the description bar below. And I'm mostly focusing around where I have added the tape. And then I am drying the ink with my heat gun before I continue. And last time I used these spray inks I had trouble getting them to dry, so this time I'm making sure to dry them well before adding any more layers. And after the purple color here is dry, I also went in with a light blue ink and sprayed that around the purple, trying not to blend them too much. And I think this color might be tumbled glass, but as I said I will check and add the link in the description below. And then I dry the ink again before adding my next layer. And for my next layer I am using these old Distress Crackle paints that I have had for a long time but never really used. And the first color I'm using is Faded Jeans, which is a light blue color. And I wanted a color that would match the Tumble Glass Distress Spray ink. And I also used my Dusty Concord Crackle paint and added that to the page too. And these crackle paints are discontinued now and you can't get them anymore, but if I'm not mistaken there is a clear one available and you could mix that with the distress paints to get your own colored crackle paint. Also the crackle paints don't do well when trying to dry them with a heat gun. You have to let them start drying on their own first. If you dry them with your heat gun they might dry too fast and then they won't become crackled. But if you wait until they started to crack on their own and then you can go in with your heat gun and speed up the process a little bit at least. So that's what I did. First I waited for the paint to start to dry and then I just used my heat gun to speed up it just a little bit. And when everything was nice and dry, I used my black acrylic paint and a palette knife to add black paint all over the spread. I didn't want the background to be white, so I added quite a lot of black to this spread. And I could probably have started out with a layer of black gesso or something, but then the ink sprays wouldn't have been visible. And also, I had no idea what was going to happen when I started, so I guess you just have to go with the flow, so to speak. And after a whole lot of black, I dry the paint with my heat gun and let it sit for a few minutes. And this paint actually dries very fast, which is good for impatient crafters like me. And now when it was dry, I kind of felt like the page ended up being too dark and there was way too much black on there. But I sort of liked the way the center of the page looked, so I decided to add some white to the page. But from experience I know that adding white paint on top of colored paint won't usually work. At least not for me. My white paints and my gesso isn't opaque enough to completely cover up the paint below. So what I decided to try this time was to use my texture paste instead. This is a really thick and opaque medium that I hoped would cover up the black. So I used a stencil from Tim Holtz and added the paste around the page using my palette knife. And luckily it all worked out and I managed to get a crisp white image on top of the black. And then as a final touch I wanted to add some more white to the page and I used my white Molotov marker to add some random text and doodles all over the spread. This gave the page some highlights and made it less dark and depressing. And that was all I did for this page and as I said it was very simple this time but I kind of liked the result anyway. And in real life it actually reminds me a little bit of a city at night. So I hope you liked it and if you did please give it a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching. <laughs>